There's no secret that I love making my own bias tape if I can. I will also use the store board, but today I'm showing you how to make continuous bias tape with only two seams and a square, so stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Today I have a super practical video for you, a tutorial on how to make continuous bias tape. I know there are lots of tutorials out there about how to do it, but this is my spin on it. And I'm using usually not the most typical fabric, so you know, you might get something extra from this one. I have here a little container full of bias tape that I have made myself. I also use store-bought one. Now it's really hard to find really nice one. Usually you'll find really stiff ones and sometimes they don't seem to be cut on the bias and they don't really turn the curves very well. I'm fortunate to have an amount of navy, white, cream, color and black sort of in 50 meter rolls that I brought from Bolivia. These are made in Peru and the quality is very nice. It's so soft, it's satin, it is cut on the bias. I do use these quite frequently. A lot actually but sometimes I'm inspired to make my garments a little bit special I might have a little bit left over from the fabric I'm working with and I just want to give that garment that extra level up by making my own I have made them in several types of fabric before having these little gadgets I'm going to show you I would just make small amounts and fold them and baste them and burn my fingers trying to do it and it was not fun so I was mainly using this before I had all these little gadgets. These gadgets are sometimes sold in a kit. I have bought them individually here locally in Brazil. I'd looked high and low in Bolivia to find them and I'd never found them and before that never seen them to buy either. So I have all the sizes basically. I have 25 millimeter, 18 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and they get smaller at nine millimeters and the tiniest, tiniest six. Now these two were sent to me in a care package from a subscriber along with many other goodies. And I had never seen tiny, tiny ones like that around here. Usually when you buy a kit, it comes with like a tool to push the fabric through them, but I don't have that and I just use my seam ripper. Anything pointy works just as well. Before I talk and talk, let's just get into the tutorial. And then I'm going to show you examples of how I use this in sewing in a practical way. I'm going to be making bias binding out of this satin and I've cut a square. I like making bias binding from a square. I know other people make it from a rectangle, but I think with a square it's just easier, <laughs> easier to calculate as well. So whatever square size you want, the fabric I have here is 20 and a half inches. So because it's a square, it's going to be the same here and the same there. And I've just cut that out super accurately and placed this on my cutting mat. Now my cutting mat has a diagonal line there, the 45 degree angle that is a bias on fabric. So I've placed that corner right there and I can't see the line but I can see where it starts and I can see where it's over there. Now I've placed my ruler right there on that corner and my ruler's length doesn't reach the other corner way over there. But I have gone ahead and drawn that line there, just extended it properly with this other ruler. And now I just have to slice this square diagonally in half. There, so that has been sliced in half. Now what I need to do is get this end and put it over there. So now what you can see here is a parallelogram. So those two lines are parallel to each other and these two diagonal lines go that way. I have the right sides of the fabric facing up and I need to sew these together. So I'm going to bring this one on top of there and put them right sides together. And now I just have to sew that together there. I use a really small seam allowance, a quarter of an inch seam allowance is all that you need to unite these two together. Those two seams I have placed wrong sides together are right here. There is a little bit that's going to be left over there on that side and the same as over here. You need that to get the right seam allowance right there. I have a quarter inch foot. I have a needle that is number 80 for wovens. 
and I'm going to be sewing with a stitch length about three. So that's been sewn and I'm gonna press these seams open. So I have sewn that seam there and now the way you need this seam to be is diagonal. So this is a triangle there that you can see and that is another triangle there that has been sewn on like that. This is actually the grain line here that you can see, the part of the fabric that doesn't stretch right there. So you need that to be diagonal and you need the one that is on the bias, this diagonal line that we cut at the beginning to be here on the bottom, really straight onto the edge of the cutting mat. The cutting mat is great help because it's along this line that I'll be measuring the amount I need to cut my strips later. So I'll be making lines in this direction, like that, all the way. Now, these are my most used bias tape makers. This yellow one is a 12 millimeter one, and this red one is a 18 millimeter. And now this 18 millimeter refers to the completed width of the bias tape with the fold inside already done. And in this case, I'm going to be using an 18 millimeter bias tape maker. So 18 millimeters times two is 36 millimeters, 3.6 centimeters, 3.5 centimeters, just to be easier to measure. And that usually works out great for this. In this case, 12 millimeters, times two is 24 millimeters, 2.5 centimeters. So just double what you see on the back. And this is in the metric system, the way these are made. So the ones you probably have at home have these numbers and they're referring to metric. Now to mark all these lines, I'm not gonna be using a friction pen because there is another step where I need to press another seam and the steam there will just erase all the marks and believe me I've done that mistake so I'm gonna mark with a normal pen just your regular pen and these lines won't be seen because you're gonna be cutting them out anyway so you're not gonna see them this ruler has all these little marks here in this specific case this whole width right there is 3.5 centimeters which is really handy because it's exactly the width i want to cut out i just put the marks there on the edge of the fabric and i just start drawing lines all the way across and i'll do that and then i'll show you how it looks okay so there you can see my pen marks there so that distance there is 35 millimeters or 3.5 centimeters that distance the same there there all the way up now sometimes depending on the size square you cut out the last one is not going to have the same width you might have a bit left over there and you might need to trim off excess that doesn't match what you're making in this case by coincidence this top part also matched three and a half centimeters so that is just coincidence if you cut a square that's 20 and a half inches and then mark all these at 35 millimeters. I think they're gonna match all the way. And there's gonna be how many rows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's basically 10 little rows there of 3.5 millimeter markings. You know, and this can vary if you're using a smaller bias tape maker or a bigger one, you know, it's gonna vary. The length of bias binding you can get from this amount is gonna be more. If you use a narrow bias tape maker and if it's going to be less if you use a wider one now these lines you see go across the seam that i had sewn there and they go across like that and those lines go all the way across there from one end to the other okay so what comes next is sewing this seam to that seam together while forming a tube so it's a little bit complicated <laughs> basically you need to grab this and sew it onto there and it's going to look super wrong but you don't start right on the edge there you have to leave one of these loose you can see one of the lines there and one of these is loose here and that's where you meet there and then this next line right there is going to meet the one on the other side but i'm going to show you this in detail on the sewing machine up closer for, for now, I'm just gonna pin this there so that I know and I can continue matching up all the way to the end over there. This is the initial seam there. And here you have a triangle that's left over. 
that is basically one of these lines here. So on the next one, what I do with each pin is put it on that line about a quarter of an inch in, that's where I'm gonna sew, and then try to match it up to the one on the other side. So I have the line there and I match it there and that's my seam allowance when I'm gonna sew these together. I just put my pin like that and I match them all up all the way to the end. Okay, so this is where I started, right there. And now the next pin, that little bit there, matches right there on the line. And same there, where I put the pin there, matches that one. And so they do need to match. I've pinned using horizontal pins. I usually use vertical pins, but I do have specific things I use the horizontal ones for and I don't remove them as I sew. I just sew slowly over them so that this doesn't move. And this is where it finishes over here and there's also one left over here. So on the top layer, you have one left over there. And when you get to the other side, the one left over is the bottom layer. You know, you have a top and a bottom layer, right? So now I'm just gonna sew these two together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I won't be using the quarter inch foot because my pins won't allow me to do that, so I'll just use my regular foot. I'm just gonna be placing the edge of my foot to the edge of the fabric as a guide, and I'm sewing with a 3.0 stitch length. I slow down when I get to the pin so I don't smash my needle onto the pin. my little tailor's pressing board that is so handy and this seam that I've just done I'm going to press it open using this and it's just easier than doing it on a flat surface like this one I have underneath and this is why I needed my lines to be made in real ink because if I'd made them with a friction pen when I press this seam open the steam is gonna go all this area and then I'm gonna have a huge area without the lines there and I really need those lines to be able to cut these accurately after this step. So I'm just gonna press this seam open there. Now, maybe you can see when I've closed up, as the seam is open, you can see the lines go across like that. They just meet there. And that's why I really needed these lines to match up. Now the next part is super fun. <laughs> So you have one of these dangling here. You have one dangling over there. I'm just gonna choose whichever side, it doesn't matter. But that's where you start cutting, following those lines that you already have. And you cut round and round and round. You gotta cut accurately on the line so that the bias tape has the same width and it's not all wonky. <laughs> Going to be cutting across seams here so when you're making the bias tape there's always going to be this annoying area of this intersection and depending on what you want to use the bias binding for you might not need to use this little bit and you might need to we'll see but it's just cut 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 all the way around and around and around and the bigger the square that you had to begin with, the longer the tape, the more you're going to be cutting. I'm using a large square. I'm going to have a lot of bias binding and this will be good for many projects. See how I'm getting all this? This is cut on the bias. All this is all perfectly cut on the bias and has the same width. So you can see all this there <laughs> and I'm almost done. I actually had to switch my scissors because my main tailor's shears is losing its um, sharpness. I need to sort that out. So I'm just cutting with a new fabric scissors. Because I'm finishing, we have this little triangle intersection again. Done. So there's all this there. And now this needs to be passed through the bias tape maker while pressing and that will create the double fold inside and the finished product 
Now for pressing, I'm going to turn off the steam because I'm going to be drenching this in starch spray that really helps press those two little double folds. So I grabbed one of the extremes of the whole length there. I just use a local thing that I find here that helps press shirts and I just, I'm just quite generous at how much I spray on this. It gets quite wet actually. And then with this um, seam ripper, I just catch it through the middle there of that vice tape maker and push it through. And then once I've got a tiny bit peeping out from the other side, I start pressing. So I just press and, and I go sliding the bias tape makers very slowly. This is a slow process for me and I'm probably pressing about an inch at a time. And you can see how that is forming the double fold there, right there. And because this is drenched in starch spray, this is actually quite stiff. If I didn't use the starch spray and just use steam, of, you know, normal water, it wouldn't press, it wouldn't make the press. And this is the exact way I do this when I make um, bias tape out of chiffon. Any, any fabric that's really hard to press. And so that's just how I go. I move the bias tape maker over by about an inch and I press it there. I move it about an inch and I press, move and just do this slowly. And I'm going to do this all off camera because you've seen how I've already started. But I'm going to show you what I do when I get to those seams. You can see that seam there. This is a very annoying little part, this triangle intersection. And I just spray it with a lot of stuff. Like as I go moving the tape, I go spraying it. And I'm just careful to pass it through. You can see it went through all that chunky seam there. And I just, I'm careful there. Help it along with my fingers there. Just be careful you don't burn yourself. There. When you get through a seam, they tend to flip out and they don't want to press. So I just help it along with my fingers to get the right, the right fold and just give it a little bit more press than you would on the areas that don't have that. And now be careful that you don't press these open. That's just what happened to me right there. Without knowing, I pressed these, this little fold open, so I have to press it back down again. So yeah, just takes a little bit of time, and at the end I'll have a lot of bias binding made out of this really cool print. So I've rolled up all my bias binding on this empty reel, you know, where I put my thread. <laughs> and I've measured it, and I have 7 meters and 75 centimeters, so 775 centimeters. And that divided by 91, because 91 centimeters is a yard, is eight and a half yards of bias binding. That is a lot. I'm going to have a lot to like do a lot of things with this. So all the little time it took me to make is worth it. But you don't have to make so much. You can make small amounts and just make a smaller square. Or if you have a random piece left over from your fabric and you just need to do a neckline, then you could just cut a strip of the length you need for your neckline or for something small. You saw there that I used an 18 millimeter one. That is the one I mostly use. That produces bias tape that is the same size as this store-bought one that is 18 millimeter as well. The 25 millimeter one is the widest one. I have found some store-bought bias tape that is this wide. I just find it extremely wide. And I would use this wider one to make a small amount of bias tape like to hem something that was a bit more structured for example like a skirt or a jacket i would make thicker bias tape for that so that it could be like a hem band that was cut on the bias and yeah that is the use i would give this one for more like thicker fabrics uh, maybe denim or linen or heavyweight cotton to make a hem band that's the use for that one and then 18 is for everything <laughs> and I would make 12 millimeter bias tape which is a bit narrower if I was specifically making an amount to finish an arm side, a sleeveless arm side or inside a neckline because then I wouldn't have to trim the first fold like I do when I use this. I have a full tutorial already on how I actually sew this on 
to a sleeveless arm hole <laughs> or a neckline and I'll link that in the cards and down below it's very explained in detail and I'm using this and I actually trim away one of these folds to make the, the bias tape a bit narrower well if you use a narrower bias tape maker then you don't have to trim and you can just apply it like you know easier well these little ones I haven't found the use for them yet but I will because I just find them super adorable I could see myself making some of um, this in a really thin fabric like rayon maybe I have some that I've made using cotton some of them have been leftovers from projects this one for example was a shirt that my husband had that ripped and I used the whole like front and back and whatever to make lots of bias tape and I have used this on the inside of some armholes inside jeans I love this cotton it's so soft and because it's already worn it's just lovely lovely texture you know this Alexandra Henry cowboy print I have used so much and I've still got like chunks and chunks um, I decided to use this fabric for pockets and bias tape because it's not I'm not gonna make a garment with cowboys all over it you know and this was a leftover from one of Martin's shirts I made him this was a remnant I love the print and I bought it to make bias tape it was a little piece and I got it to do that and I have used this inside of jeans for pockets mainly for my husband's my dad's you know this, this is a like masculine red and blue print you know these are very easy to press to cut and to mark so in the tutorial you saw I was working with satin now satin chiffon crepe they slide all over your cutting mat sometimes so what I do is spray it with starch spray the fabric and just let it dry there and it turns really stiff with chiffon I sticky tape the edges you know that parallelogram I stick it on the mat and when I mark all those lines I get the ruler and press it really firmly down while I mark them or else the fabric just wants to shift everywhere so you can make bias tape out of anything and <laughs> I have made it out of all those tricky fabrics. This is my Sienna coat, the long version, and I made the bias tape to go in there just to close those facings and it looks really neat and nice. And it's just a detail for me because it is inside. This is the shorter Sienna coat. You see that I made in navy as well, but linen. And also it has the finish there with that bias tape there around the facing and it just looks so nice inside, you know? Now you see sometimes that Hong Kong finishes inside a garment are really popular and they look really nice and people go and make their bias tape and everything but in reality I think it could get super bulky inside to bind every single seam. My opinion, I do like things to look nice inside but I don't want them to look bulky either and I have done that with few pieces. But the trick there is to make my own bias tape and I make it out of chiffon or rayon because it's so thin and it, it's beautiful and it just protects the edge of the fabric without causing bulk. This little shirt, this is a linen shirt that I refashioned. I took off the sleeves, I made it sleeveless. It was a couple sizes larger than me so I resized it to me. And linen is beautiful to sew with <laughs> and I made my own bias tape with this rayon that was left over from sew over at ultimate culottes I made myself I had a piece left beautiful fabric very nice to work with for making bias tape it does shift around when you're trying to cut and mark but when you have your strips already made actually passing it through the bias tape maker it presses like a dream you don't need to like put starch or anything it just it's really fast as well and you don't need to go as slow as I was showing there but I did bind all the seams here on the inside and the hem and it looks beautiful without giving you bulk. I don't think satin bias tape looks really nice on Hong Kong finishes, my opinion. And I think it can get bulky as well when you fold it. it it's a bit bulky. And then this is a tensile and I made bias tape to hem. Now you see this is a really curved hem, it's got the tie there and everything here has been done with bias tape. And it, it, from the right side the, the shirt looks beautiful, this is a Montana shirt from Itch to Stitch. 
has a front tie feature there and I think this is the only way I would be happy to hem a curved hem, you know? This is a Melrose top from each to stitch and the only place this pattern has bias binding is around the neckline there. Now this pattern does come with a template, like a long strip with the right width for you to cut that one strip fully on the bias. Uh, that can be a little bit fabric hungry, so depending on the amount of fabric I have, which is usually minimal, I will have to piece it at least once. So it's not a large amount of bias tape I made, but I did pass it through the bias tape maker, drenching it in starch spray and everything to get it to work. This is some bias tape I have made from chiffon that I have left over in this coral color. It's super nice. I made lots and lots of meters of this and I've used it for many projects. I've used it to hem a skirt, butterick something, I can't remember the number, but I'll put it on screen. It's got a peplum and a rounded shape and there's no way I could have gotten a nice hem if I just tried to fold up, you know? So I used this, it was the same color and it's not bulky and it looks beautiful. On the tutorial, you saw me making eight and a half yards of this bias tape made out of satin, sort of leopard print with yellow and blue. You will see a completed project where I use this. I used it for the hem, but I'm not showing you that. I'm not telling you anything about that yet. I still have a lot left and I think it'll come in handy for many things. Now, this can be used on the inside of some tops. For example, this Hannah tank I made bias tape from satin as well in there from leftover satin I had from another Melrose top <laughs> and I finished all the neckline inside with that super pretty and then the inside of the arm side and it's a matching color and because it's been understitched and then top stitched when you're wearing the garment you're never going to see that contrast bias tape inside either and that's made with satin and I think it looks just so pretty um, it's all about everything pretty, you know. <laughs> These two tops, this is the Melody Dolman and this is the Harmony from Love Notions. They're made with crepe and I also made bias tape to finish the things. So I have a bit left over of this one. Now, this is terrible to press. It's not even like, it, it never actually pressed. But you can see both fold lines there, sort of. So when I was applying this to the arm side and the neckline, I had to go folding it myself and pinning it. it. It wasn't easy to work with at all, but it was worth the trouble because look how nice that looks right there. The Melody Dolman in the instructions has the option of doing a narrow hem, just fold it up. It does have a curved hem and I did make bias tape for it and I did hem it that way. So yeah. It's all very nice, very neat, and from the outside it looks beautiful. Last year I refashioned a blouse that was made of linen with this print, and I, because I took the sleeves off, I used the sleeves to make bias tape. <laughs> and I did finish the sleeveless armhole in that blouse with this one. And now what would I use this for? Anything else I made out of linen that was sleeveless, you know? To finish a facing maybe from something structured like denim. I would use this to do a hem in a structured garment. It depends on the type of fabric, the type of use. But I hope this was useful. Another spin to it, another way to make your garments look nice inside. And you know, I always mention I made this, I made bias tape. I thought I might as well have a video on the channel showing you how I do it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you again soon. Bye. You.